If you're just getting around updating to version 1.9, let's talk about some quirks. Welcome to SETI Astro. I know a lot of you have been waiting for PixInsight version 1.9 to be more stable prior to updating it. And even if you've already updated it, there's probably some things you didn't uh, notice or didn't realize or had questions on. So I thought I'd cover some of those uh, qu quirky things. So I think the first one to do is look at where Image Solver went. So before Image Solver was under script image analysis, you're not going to find it there anymore. It's up under astrometry, image solver. Uh, they've also split apart or, or made it possible to have uh, scripts in multiple drop downs. So you're going to find like mosaic by coordinates both under mosaic and under astrometry. So there, there is some expanded capabilities with that, but that's where you're going to find that's where you're going to find the new image solver. The really big ones to me were in way to batch pre-processing. Everybody uh, that has PixInsight probably uses this for their stacking. The first thing to know is uh, under image integration under the lights tab, there's going to be an automatic integration mode default checked. This is going to turn on fast batch pre-processing if you have over 150 light frames. They're really trying to push their fast batch pre-processing. So they're, they're defaulting that in there. If you don't want to have fast batch pre-processing ran, be sure to uncheck that. The other thing is, before this update, they were defaulting to the generalized extreme studentized deviant as their rejection algorithm. It's a very robust algorithm, very well documented. It, it's it, it's the, the best they have. But for version 1.9, you're going to see that the rejection algorithm is defaulted to linear fit clipping. The reason for this has nothing to do with the quality of the rejection of linear fit clipping over the extreme studentized deviant. It has to do with speed. I, I guess they were concerned that they were losing market share over how long WBPP takes versus other stacking solutions out there. And that's why they are thinking they're losing some market share. So they defaulted the rejection algorithm to linear fit clipping because it's faster, not because it's actually giving you a better result. I think if you've spent the money on uh, Pix Insight, you're probably going to want the rejection algorithm to be the, the best it can be, which is the generalized extreme studentized deviant. It does take a little longer, but I think most people are setting this and forgetting it anyways and waiting until it's done done running. So uh, that's going to be like the first thing you're going to want to do is go into your lights tab under image integration. There's the little gear. Switch that back. Um, Again, it was this uh, perceived change that maybe they'd get some market share back if, uh, if they were a little quicker with WBPP. Now, this isn't new to version 1.9, but I don't, I don't think it's talked about much. I think their automatic cosmetic correction, uh, it, it's just, I don't find it that great. <laughs> um, I think that the, the better route still is to make your own template and uh, use, your, use your own template for cosmetic correction. In order to do that, you're going to want to go to process, all process cosmetic correction, and that's going to pull up your, your cosmetic correction. All I do for that is use auto detect, uh, I check hot and cold. I use three standard deviations from the surrounding neighboring pixels to use. And uh, that's where I have it. If you have it higher, it's going to be uh, less restrictive, right? It's going to uh, allow more things that it would think is a hot or cold pixel to, to slide under the radar. But that's all you do. You drag that off. 
you you rename it um, to to something that's meaningful to you, and then just save it with all your other processing icons. So when you open Pix Insight from that, they'll be they'll be safe for you. Now when you go into WPPP, you're gonna see that under the templates there there's our new template uh, process sixty one. So that's that's how you actually get these templates into there. Again, I don't find automatic to be to be that great. I always uncheck it and just use my template across all of them. Another thing in WPPP you're gonna to have to experiment with is if you are drizzling your data. And I know a lot of people, especially with one shot color data is going to be drizzling. There is a fast mode now that's automatically enabled and that's going to greatly speed up um, Gaussian variable shapes and circular. And, and Gaussian is the, you know, is like the ideal one to be using for drizzle over square. It preserves the small scale noise structure and star shapes and stuff way better than, than square does. Uh, but fast mode, it, it, it uses, well, you could read here. It, it uses a lot of different lookup tables to estimate the, the drizzle droplets and, and all that to greatly speed up the the actual processing versus calculating all that every single time for each each drop of the drizzle so it is highly recommended to use fast mode it's just one of those things they they defaulted it it was in the announcement it, it but you know it was kind of overlooked by a lot of people so you, you may want to experiment uh, having that checked or unchecked uh, and, and seeing if that'll improve the improve or degrade the quality of your your drizzle I'm gonna I haven't experimented with that yet and and that's something I'm, I still need to do as well another WPPP thing that's not mentioned much is uh, actually I don't even remember seeing it in the, the release notes is you can reuse the uh, the last reference frames which is nice so if you if you check these you'll see that your image registration uh, reference image here is is grayed out so that way if you didn't clear your cache so that's a big thing if you if you purchase the cache it's gone uh, but if you you know ran wbpp on a night's worth of data and then you're going to take a whole another night's worth of data and you just want to integrate that that new data in as long as you didn't delete stuff out of whatever output directory you had for that you can reuse those reference frames which will speed up um, that portion of the, the WPPP and uh, it'll ensure that you won't have to re-register all the other stuff that was that was already registered, right? So if it, if it would have found a, a different reference frame because of that second night's data, then it's gonna have to re-register everything it already did anyways. So um, if you're adding new data I would recommend clicking that reuse last reference frame for image registration. I honestly wouldn't use it for local normalization just because you may have better images that in your new data that you would want in your reference frame for the local normalization. But it's another thing if you do uh, reuse last reference frame for local normalization, that's gonna significantly speed up that step of WBPP as well. Uh, since all it's going to do is use that previous local normalization reference frame to correct the new subframes you've gotten. So, uh, you know, it just depends on how much time you want to take in WBPP and you know, what what methods you want, but it's it's clear that they they're really pushing speed over necessarily the best quality. And, and again, you, you can select over here in some presets for, you know, what they think is the maximum quality, faster, fastest, in, in, in things of that nature. Just some things to know, they, they have changed the defaults around here. So you're definitely going to want to go in here and make sure that your image integration, rejection algorithm is correct. If you don't want fast batch pre-processing, be sure to uncheck that. If you're doing uh, drizzling, you know, it's defaulted to fast mode. That may be good or not, I don't know yet. And, and things like that. The other thing you're gonna find is under process, all process, there's gonna be something called an unknown process. 
this isn't uh, so much a quirk as when you first get uh, version 1.9 downloaded, if you have a lot of saved icons, like I have a lot of saved icons here, prior to installing all the third-party uh, plugins, processes, scripts, uh, you'll just have a little uh, alien face on all those as, uh, as unknown processes. So instead of you getting an error that it couldn't load certain process icons, it's just going to throw up the, the unknown process for you until you get those loaded. I actually think that's a really nice feature they added for uh, 1.9 instead of giving you uh, a bunch of errors when you first uh, load from the XPSM file. Another change uh, that really isn't listed anywhere, if you go to edit, global preferences, under parallel processing and threads, they've increased the maximum module thread priority. It used to be set on highest, it's now time critical by default. So this is just one step below real time, which could actually make your computer uh, unstable. So if you find PixInsight is, um, having more frequent qu crashes it may be that it's trying to allocate too much cpu time for its process and causing other failures in in windows or in your other operating systems so if you find your uh, computer just having lots of issues under high load in PixInsight, you may want to move this off time critical to highest or or, or high or something like that and then when you make that change, be sure to click the apply a global button to actually set that setting. Well, I hope this video uh, helps some people out there getting the new version 1.9 set up and, and working through some of the, the early, you know, kinks in the process that have that have changed now. Please comment, like and subscribe.